Hello everybody, welcome to the channel. Today we are going to be diagramming storm images. I'm gonna be showing you different parts of storms, what these storms were doing, things you can look for if you're a storm spotter, storm chaser, or a storm content enthusiast, and you just want to know what a storm is doing. This is a learning channel. This is where you come to learn about severe weather, and that's exactly what we're going to do today. too far into the video be sure to subscribe we want you to do that because this is one of many dozens hundreds of hours of education we have on this channel and i want you to subscribe so with that said let's get to our first storm diagram so the first storm we're going to look at this first storm is from may 10th this last year this is in the texas panhandle this is the far western texas panhandle this is right where it begins uh, this was a day that was unheralded. There was a very low risk on this day. There was very limited dew points on this day. But the first thing I want to label here is the updraft because that is pretty clear right here. This staccato base area right here, this uh, pe visible piece of the cloud, that is your updraft. That's where the storm is literally bringing air upwards, right? That's where that storm is bringing air upwards. And then over here, Yes, if you've watched this channel enough, you know exactly what that is, right? That is the downdraft. And let's make that a little smaller. Is it a little smaller? There we go. And that's the downdraft. And that's where the rain and hail is falling. Let's zoom in to this area right here because I want to point out something uh, you can see. Uh, up here, um, up here, right? This whole area up here, that is really, really over the top, isn't it? Uh, let's bring that stroke down there a little bit up here. This area is quite honestly, uh, it's it's a lot darker. Uh, this is the rain and hail right here. This is a lot darker than this area down here, right? This area, let's make that an orange so you can kind of see. So this area is a lot darker uh, up here than down here. And that's because uh, the air, uh, there's more moisture up here in this part of the atmosphere right there's there's a lot more uh for the atmosphere to work with right here uh this is actually uh drier drier near the surface and that is because this area right here uh the dew points are really low today the these dew points uh dew points are in the 30s dew points high 30s low 40s so because of that the subcloud layer here is very dry so you get these really big intense cores right here these these cores get really intense but then they aren't so much near the surface and that is because of the simple fact that it is just drier so what you're having here is this downdraft what you, you get this downdraft action going right here and what happens is because of how this is laid out, let's bring this down underneath downdraft here, uh, the air is actually progressively getting drier. So rain is evaporating on the way down. This does happen pretty generally, period. But when you have a very dry subcloud layer like this, it's going to happen more often it's gonna be more pronounced so this is a day where uh i i should label this this is a severe storm and this is a supercell this is not something you see often though you don't see uh this happen that often but yes this is a severe storm and this is a supercell even though you have dew points here you have drier air near the surface. You have more moisture aloft. This more moisture aloft is causing a lot of the instability. This storm is rooted above the surface a little bit. And because of that, this storm is actually able to drop some pretty large hail because of wind shear. The wind shear on this day was able to organize this storm, give the storm the ability to rotate, give the updraft the ability to be a little bit more stronger, get those hailstones lofted, grown up, and then they fall to the earth. So... This is a severe storm. This storm, absolutely something that if you, you, you look at it, you don't think it's too much, but you drive through it and you're getting a lot of big hell. 
Now the next storm up on this tour is this one from May 17th this past year in the Texas Panhandle as well. We're going to be hitting the Texas Panhandle a lot in this video. So what's going on here? This spaceship looking thing, right? This looks like a spaceship. And that is because uh, of the wind shear. Uh, you can see uh, one thing I want to show that seems pretty obvious, but you can see, ooh, I don't know what happened to our uh, little uh, brush there. Let's bring that down and let's... Uh, Let's make that a little bit better, right? Right, we don't want to be uh, getting too out, out there. So you can see it almost looks like this is curved around. That's because you got this circular base, right? So anytime you get a circular base, uh, you can bet on a couple of things. You can bet on the fact that the storm is rotating, right? So uh, circular, oh, circular base equals row rotating storm. Uh, this is uh, something that is honestly lost on people uh, a lot because they don't, they just don't realize that uh, a storm to be rotating needs to be kind of circular, right? It's hard for a uh, rotation to happen on an odd shape. So typically supercells are going to be somewhat, somewhat round. So this is a rep, this is a round storm. This is a rotating storm, uh, but also you can notice here, I want to point out uh, striation sculpting equals rotating storm. Uh, and let's draw an arrow to what I'm talking about here. Oh, let's do this and let's draw that arrow. You can see this, uh, the striations, the sculpting, uh, all that. That's also indica indicative of a rotating storm. Because uh, for a storm to rotate and it, it, and it should to look like this, it's got to be doing a few things to uh, be, be, be pretty obvious it's rotating. Uh, and uh, so here, the sculpting, that's something that you don't get on a storm that's not rotating. Also, the circular base. You can get a circular base and the storm not be rotating. But typically, th these two things are uh, pointing you toward the fact that the storm is rotating. Um, Something else uh, I see is that the uh, core is quite transparent. Let's actually take this, copy and paste it. Uh, let's do this. Transparent core. And I'm just going to bring that over here because this area right back here is transparent. Let's like make it blue of some kind. That doesn't look good. Let's do an orange transparent core back here. Um, and I'll get rid of this one uh, so you can kind of see this a little better so you got a transparent core back here uh it's you know it's very weak the the core is shifted off to the north and east but you also have oh not knowing what happened there right let's do this uh, let's get rid of that i don't know what happened there so uh so you got what's this coming down back here right there what's that uh that is another storm encroaching so we have another storm encroaching back here uh which is not good uh if you're looking for tornadoes right because if you're looking for a storm uh to produce tornadoes and you've got another one about to uh ram into yours that's not good uh you can actually see here uh updraft uh you can see it happening right here uh this is an updraft that's another updraft second updraft second updraft and let's do this and uh yeah designing's fun on the fly i know i did this last time and i was like i'll never do this again well we're doing it again so you have second updraft happening right there so your actual updraft here this is your primary updraft this is the one that we're looking at. This is our storm, right? This is the storm we're looking at. And you see here, scud under the base, which is right here. That's terrible. What's going on with that arrow? Let's try this again. There we go. <laughs> oh, let's move this over. This is, this is fun. Designing on the fly. Uh, but you have the scud underneath the base right there. And you got to ask yourself, what's what's going on? What 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 is this uh, all about, right here? And let's make this. So, what's all that happening right there? All that ba that scud. Uh, well, what you want to look for when this is happening, when when you when you see uh, scud underneath the base, 
There's a couple of things you want to look for. Is it rising rapidly into the base? That's a sign you got a strong updraft. This updraft's strong. It's surface base. It's pulling up air parcels from the surface, which are lifting and condensing, lifting, cooling, and condensing up into the updraft. That storm is strong. You get a situation like this, though. This scud, these cloud tags, were just kind of sitting there, rolling over. They were rolling. There was some rolling action. They were just sitting there. When you get that, that's a sign of more stable air because that air is not lifting because it is stable. Unstable air lifts, stable air stays still. And so when you got scud just hanging out like that, you can tell that there's definitely some outflow happening, something like that, and your storm's getting undercut. That's ex absolutely what was the case here. This storm was actually in its dying throes. Uh, another thing that you can see with that is that while this looks circular, there's a bit of a triangle-ness to it too, which I do you do see sometimes. Let me see if I can get do this and not mess it up. Uh, we don't want this, and we want this dash line here. That uh, didn't work, but that's okay. You can see a bit of a triangle, uh, triangle backside. And I'm just going to do this and bring this over like this. Oh my gosh, what happened? There we go. And then you can see this triangle backside right here. Uh, anytime you see a supercell starting to show that triangle backside kind of thing, where it looks kind of like an arrowhead or something, that's a good sign that this storm is uh, on its way to the deathbed. Uh, because if you do that, uh, oh, that's not just everything. Let's try this. Let's go all the way up here. Let's turn off everything. You can kind of see uh, how there is that transparent, that, that little triangling happening, that backside like that. That's a good sign that you are actually on your way to having uh, a dead storm unfortunately. But this storm did look pretty, made for great time lapses. Uh, this storm was uh, an interesting one. It was a favorite of mine for a couple of reasons. Wasn't expecting supercells that day. That was, I wasn't, so that was great. And then also this storm just had a pretty look to it in at Blue Hour right here. So let's take a look at one more storm. So this storm uh, is part of the May 26th. 2023 tornado event in central new mexico this storm is the one that produced the tornadoes this storm is uh, a dream come true for me in this region i i've always wanted to chase a storm that looked like this i mean look at this let's zoom in look at this beautiful barrel updraft you got a lowering oh, you got the mountains back here look at those mountains amazing mountains those are the manzano mountains just to the east and south of my home literally that way uh not too far that's where the this storm was. It was like 20 miles over there. So this was the easiest storm chase of the year for me too. It was great. Uh, but this is a classic storm. There's a lot to label here. I'm excited. This is going to be, this is like a textbook supercell in a lot of ways. Textbook LP supercell as well. Why is an LP supercell? Well, look here. This over here, downdraft, right? Let's get that. Let's get the font set right. Uh, because we can't be doing that. We got to be having the right font for everything. So this is the downdraft over here. Uh, this downdraft is where your rain and hail fall, right? We, we talk about that all the time on our channel. Uh, but you're, when you see those whips of rain, that's where your rain and hail is falling. This over here is the updraft. This is your updraft base. Uh, so there's a lot going on here. Uh, you can also see that the updraft is tilted. Uh, let's bring this over. Uh, and then you see tilted updraft signifying wind shear. Uh, this is signifying some pretty decent wind shear in the atmosphere right now. Uh, you can see uh, if we uh, draw us a neat, nice little line here, uh, we'll make it orange and then let's just do it. Uh, you can see how this tilted updraft, this updraft is tilted like this. That's a good sign that you have wind shear and you probably could have a supercell, right? Uh, there's a lot going on uh, otherwise too. You can actually see uh, more. You can see some uh, knuckles back here. Uh, knuckles towards the anvil. Anvil signifying strength. Anytime you see those knuckles all the way to the anvil like that, that means you're still getting strong, robust updraft growth all the way. You can kind of see them. You can see those knuckles right there. Uh, that's when you know that you're getting some uh, you're being able to see some uh, updraft strength there. And then, of course, you have over here, the anvil is right here. 
So we want to, that's where the storm literally uh, grows, tops out, and spreads downwind, right? So let's take a look at the area below this storm, this, this area right down in here, because I really want to talk about this. First off, you can kind of see, uh, let's just, uh, let's put, make this blue so you can really, we can drive it home, but you can see just kind of through here, and I'm going to try to make this line just a little bit smaller, because that's just a little too wide for my taste. Um, you can see right here, there's a bit of a horseshoe. That's the horseshoe. And let's uh, do this horseshoe. And now let's draw a line to it. Oh, let's actually brush, brush. And then let's make this triangle. This is the horseshoe taking shape right here, right? This over here is the wall cloud. So there's a lot. This is the typical uh, situation of where a storm is occluding because you can see this wall cloud. It's becoming pretty ragged. Wall cloud has become ragged and disorganized looking. Uh, that is because uh, the this horseshoe, the RFD is spreading. It, this RFD is literally like spreading out and it's cutting off that inflow. And because of that, you're seeing that this storm is uh, starting to lose a little bit of this uh, organization down low. Uh, a thing that I would love to point out here is, and let's make this really small so you can really get a good idea about it. Uh, you can see how the slant here is away and the slant here is toward the precipitation. Um, Let's do this. Slant here is toward the precipitation. Precipitation's here. This is slanting down toward it. This is slanting down away from it. So you can tell this over here. Um, let's get this set up. Let's get another text going. Uh, slant away indicates outflow. Uh, this is outflow. This is a downdraft. This is the rear flank downdraft, RFD. That's what's going on here. You have the RFD working its way through. Uh, and then over here, you have the wall cloud slant towards, indicates inflow. And let's just get rid of RFD. We don't need that slant towards, indicates inflow. So you have uh, two different sides. You can see the horseshoe working its way through the middle. It's literally pushing in the middle where that arrow is facing. You have the slant away indicating outflow. It means that air is moving out and condensing uh, in that area. And then you have the wall cloud slant towards it indicating the inflow. So this is a very classic supercell in so many ways. It's an LP, but this is a classic LP supercell in so many ways. I'm using the word classic when there's a classic supercell. I'm sorry, but this is like textbook. This is a textbook LP supercell in so many ways. This storm did go on to produce a tornado. Really wild storm. So hey, I hope you enjoyed these diagrams. These are three. I'm going to do more of these in the next couple months. Maybe we'll try to do another live class, but I just want to do three, kind of talk through a couple of different things. I hope you enjoyed this. Be sure to remember, weather's for everybody. That includes you. Subscribe, and we'll see you next time.